Hey, welcome back hikers. Bigfoot here. Today I'm going to review the most requested piece of gear that I have brought with me out on the trail as of late. And that's the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Windrider 3400 I bought with me on the JMT. And because you guys asked, I'm also going to compare a lot of the features of my HMG pack to that of my z Packs Arc Blast that I took during my AT through hike. All right, so I said earlier, this is the 3400 pack that's made by Hyperlite Mountain Gear. I went with this pack because I wanted to try something different. I have been exclusive just to the z Packs line of products and wanted to see what else is out there. And this is one of the other leading ultralight companies that is making packs out there, HMG. Now I went with the Windrider, the 3400, which is 55 liters, just because I thought it would be big enough for me to carry my canister inside and have that extra capacity if I needed it out there on the JMT. Now I did a pretty deep overview of this pack and all the features and the specs. I will uh, throw that link right here at the top if you want to check it out. But basically 55 liters made of Dyneema composite, which is formerly known as Cuban fiber, comes in at 32 ounces and is waterproof. So the things I'm going to start off with first is what I liked about the pack and then I'll talk about some of the features that I didn't like and why. The first thing uh, with uh, the pack facing as it is, I'll start with the mesh. The mesh seems like it is a lot more durable than that mesh of the, uh, the Z-Packs line of, of products. So I liked the fact that this just seems like it's going to hold up well. You'll see with my Arc Blast that I've gotten a couple holes in the mesh, nothing that is preventing it from performing, but I, I don't know that it would last as long as the mesh here on the HMG pack. One of the things that I said in my brief overview was the V-strap up here at, at the top and was something that I thought maybe was overkill or unnecessary. And I actually came to enjoy this V-strap. It gives you the option to be able to attach your bear canister at the very top. And uh, because it's in the form of a V, really makes the stability of the bear canister possible on top of your pack. You just align it with the ridges and uh, I only probably held it at the very top of my pack for maybe 15, 20, 30 miles. I didn't really like the way that it felt on my back with the canister outside of the pack. I preferred it inside. Now I talked about the mesh being really durable, which was something that I, I liked about this pack. Well, the other thing that I like about this is that's the case for the entire pack. It's made of a thicker, heavier Dyneema, which means it's gonna last longer. And that's really the reason why it's a lot heavier than the z Packs line. In addition to that, just the choice of materials that they use for the shoulder straps, the hip belts, and uh, a lot of the adjustment straps. Also, I'll play into that, but this pack is gonna last you a long time. There's no doubt about that. Now I got 300 miles on this thing and you know, there was really no wear at all that I could see. And I wouldn't be surprised if this thing would last you 5,000 miles plus, just kind of seeing what, uh, what, what I saw out on the trail. Now I did have an issue with a chipmunk getting into my hip belt here. So you see a little hole right here on my hip belt pocket. And that's my own damn fault that has nothing to do with actually HMG, just a little bit of carelessness on my part. Now the other plus on the HMG pack here is it comes with a pouch for your hydration bladder. So most of these ultralight packs don't have that, you usually just have some sort of clip where you can hang it, but this actually comes with a pouch. That, that's something that for me doesn't matter because I don't use a bladder, but for a lot of other folks I think they would like that feature on, uh, on the HMG packs. Now the last thing that I personally liked a lot about this pack was just how much extra roll top that you have in the very top gives you the ability to be able to fit some extra stuff in here if you need it. And if you don't, of course, you can just roll it right down. And they have some compression straps. This is a little different than the Z packs and how the roll top works. So with the HMG pack, once you Velcro the top, you'll of course roll it. And with the Z packs line, you're going to clip it right here. And that's how you close the roll top and then they have a strap on the top that goes over. 
but with the HMG packs, they have compression straps on each side so you can really tighten your HMG pack down as much as you want. I don't have a lot in here, of course, but I think a lot of people will enjoy that. For me, it was probably a little bit more than I really needed. So those are the things that I liked about the HMG pack. Starting off with the mesh pocket again, what I didn't like is the capacity. This thing is 300 cubic inches and the, uh, the capacity of this is just under five liters. I didn't think it was enough. This is prime real estate, especially for a ultralight through hiker. We uh, are always on the go and we like to throw a lot of stuff in here that makes it easy, accessible. But a lot of ultralight through hikers like to uh, just stuff their tents in their pack. And when it's wet, they throw it here in the mesh pocket for it to dry out. And I don't know that you would have a lot of capacity if you threw your tent in here to put other things. Like for me personally, I like to keep my rain jacket, my wind pants, my toilet paper. And then I just, I just threw this towel in here just to replicate other random things that I'll throw in here, like maybe some extra food uh, or maybe an extra water bottle or pouch or whatever it might be. But there always seems to be extra things that you just kind of throw in here as you go. Now to give you an idea, this is my Arc Blast, my 2015 Arc Blast. And their capacity of their mesh pocket is eight liters. So you get quite a bit more, almost double. That's three liters more. And I can fit a lot more in this. So you can see that I could probably fit, you know, another three liters, four liters of stuff in here. So moving on past the uh, center mesh pocket is the size of the actual hip belt pockets. This was probably something that potentially could be a deal breaker for a lot of people. The, the pockets on here are so much smaller than the Z-Packs. So here's the size of the HMG. And the problem that I had with this is I couldn't even fit my iPhone 7 Plus in here and zip it up. I could possibly do it without the case, but uh, with the case on, it is so tight. Even without the case was really difficult. And just comparing that to Z-Packs, this is their pocket. I mean, you can see how much bigger that it is compared to HMG. Just to give you an idea, with my same phone here, with the case, I have no issues with putting that inside of my hip belt pocket. And I have plenty of extra room. Uh, there's no issues with it overstretching. This is another area for me that's really prime real estate when you're out there hiking and you're on the go. You need to be able to have something big enough to be able not just carry your phone, maybe it's a uh, small camera, or a lot of food in my case. I like to have uh, pockets where I can carry food and I can eat on the go so I don't have to keep on stopping and taking off my pack. Now, in addition to the pockets itself, they are sewn into the hip belt, you can see right here. So they, they, they're not removable. As you can see with the Z-Packs packs, you can remove these pockets, you can remove the hip belt. And in this case, with my situation where I had the chipmunk that chewed a hole right through my pocket, I'm pretty much hosed. Uh, the, I can't replace the belt, I can't replace the pocket. If it was a Z-Packs pack, no problem. Now, as I said, with, with the hip belt, I think this is really important. I think having a hip belt that you can replace and exchange out without having to exchange your entire pack, that is a pretty big deal, and I'll tell you why. On the course of a through hike, a lot of people, especially guys, because they lose weight a little faster than women do. And there are a lot of hikers out there that lose so much weight that they need to go to a smaller size of hip belt. And with the HMG, everything is all sewn into it. So whatever you start with, you're stuck with. There's no customization after that. You can't exchange it out. You'd have to get an entire new pack. Now on the same lines with the HMG pack, there is no load lifter, there's no torso adjustment strap on the shoulder pads. And that's something that, again, is a turnoff for me because out there on the trail, I found myself having to adjust those things a little bit uh, every little while. And with this just being all sewn in, that's what I get. Now one of the things I mentioned as a feature that some folks would probably like, which is the adjustments, the compression adjustments on this thing, for me personally, it was just overkill. I don't need to have all these compression straps with Z-Packs. All I needed was 
just the, the two straps on the top that closed the roll top and then the strap that kept my roll top closed. There's nothing else that I needed to compress with how light that I'm already at that I needed to make extra room to stuff more things inside of my pack. Now on the inside, I talked about the pouch, the bladder pouch that is in here, but in addition to that is an internal frame. It's not an external frame like the Z-Pax packs. And they have aluminum frames built into this, which these, again, add a lot of extra weight. And the last and probably most important thing that was a turnoff for me on this pack compared to Z-Packs is just the comfortability level and the airflow uh, that I feel here on my back. This carried different and I attribute that just with the idea and concept that Z-Packs has with their ARC series. Now with Z-Packs, how they differentiate themselves from HMG is they have, of course, their carbon fiber frame, which is an external frame on the outside. There's two of them. And I personally prefer the external frame, but they have their patented arc adjustment. So if you want a lot of arc on this thing, you can adjust it. If you want less arc, you can adjust that too. And that will be able to give you a little bit more comfortability, actually a lot more comfortability, and then it will provide that air gap so you can stay a little bit more cooler on your back. But for me, what was more important than it just being cooler, it just was way more comfortable. I don't have to worry so much about how I pack my ARC series pack. If there's something that might be protruding out a little bit, I'm not really going to feel it because of the mesh and how much arc that I have on this thing. Whereas my HMG pack, it was really important how I decided to pack this thing because I could feel a lot. I could feel almost everything that was in my pack because there wasn't anything that separated my back from the actual back of my pack. Well, there you have it. Those are my thoughts about the features, what I liked and what I didn't like about the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Pack, and then just how it compares to the Arc Glass that I brought with me out on the trail. Now, the HMG Pack, I have about 300 trail miles, and my Arc Glass, I have about 3,000. So a little bit of difference of how much wear that I've had on my Arc Blast compared to the HMG Pack, but I do feel that I have a good handle and a feel for it out on the trail from my recent through hike. So what pack will I be bringing on my upcoming through hike? It's gonna be the Z-Packs. Now, since I have about 3,000 miles on this thing and there are parts of it that are starting to wear, I don't know that I would bring my Arc Blast out on my next through hike. If it's a long distance through hike, I will probably end up buying the Arc Hall as my next pack. But, you know, I, I just feel personally that the comfortability level that I have with the uh, ARC series of packs that Z-Packs makes. I was so comfortable out there on the trail on my AT through hike, and it's a lot lighter, which, you know, who doesn't want to carry a half a pound less out there on the trail? So there's just too many advantages for me that I saw with the uh, ARC series packs for Z-Packs then the HMG. I, I did see a lot and meet a lot of hikers out on the PCT that really loved their HMG pack. Uh, you know, they had a couple of similar complaints that I have, but they uh, they were happy with, with how it was performing out there on the trail. Now, Z-Packs has gone through a couple of changes with their ARC series that have made them more durable and addressed some of their issues that they have seen out on the trail. You know, my pack is from 2015 and uh, is probably a couple of versions or at least one version older than what their uh, newest series is, what you would buy out there on the website today. So keep that in mind as well. Now, what is your go-to pack and what are the reasons why? Throw those in the comments below so all of us can read. I'm really interested in seeing what you guys sport out there. Now, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe to my channel, make sure you do that. It doesn't cost you anything and hit that little notification button so that you're alerted each time that I upload a video. I have a lot of content and material that I'll be uploading here in the next few months to help you prepare for your 2018 through hike. And with that, stay tuned for many more sightings and remember to always follow Bigfoot. Thank you.